Awesome. Great job, Eddie. Good morning, church. We're so happy that you're here this morning to those visiting or watching online. Thanks for participating with us today. Psalm 59, 16 through 17 reads this, But I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love. For you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. David goes on to say, You are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. So you know God knows the season of life that each and every one of you are in this morning. What are you praying and relying on God for lately? Surrender it to him again this morning in the house of the Lord. And like the scripture says, let's sing of his strength, love, and praise him for being our fortress and the one we can rely on. Let's stand and worship our God together. All right, y'all know it. Let's sing out Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Let every eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. If you know it, close your eyes and sing it. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing. promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior stand of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, sing it out, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. Coming some technical difficulties as you can see up there but let's not let these screens distract us right God deserves our all this morning so if you know the song close your eyes lift your hands exalt him because you're a child of God you're standing in the house of the Lord with your faith family so let's just take in this moment and sing out trust and obey don't let the screens distract you let's focus on our risen Savior amen we trust in him church and we obey his word. So let's declare that out. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and to trust and obey but we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey y'all know what we sing trust and obey for there's no to trust and obey then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way what he says we will do where he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey you all know it trust and obey for there's no to 
you trust and obey. Amen. Amen. It's always wonderful to praise the Lord together. We're glad you're here. Before you're seated, just take a moment and greet those around you. Would you do that? Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome. We are glad that you're here this morning. A special welcome if you're a guest, and we hope you'll feel right at home as you worship with us today. I have a, a few announcements that I would like to highlight. These are, are all in your bulletin. But first of all, Tapestry of Quail is coming back on June 5th. And we're excited about that. We want to say thank you to those who have stepped up to make it happen. And there's an opportunity now uh, for all of us because we need that good food, right? We need that good food. And so... We're looking for those willing to prepare food from your unique ethnic background. That's what gives tapestry its wonderful flavor. And so if you're willing to prepare and share uh, some of uh, that cultural food in this way, email robin at qlbc.org. Looking forward to the summer day camp is also coming back. And we need bus drivers. We need bus drivers in a big way. This is a, a paid part-time position with regular hours during the, the weeks of, of day camp. And so if you're licensed and you'd like to check out this opportunity, you could be a day camp hero. You could be a hero to the campers and to the staff. And so if you'd like to uh, check it out, uh, contact Mike Tack at mike at qlbc.org. This Saturday, May 7th, we're going to distribute flowers in the neighborhood surrounding the church. We want mothers to know that they're loved and they're honored. And it's going to be in two shifts uh, this Saturday. 8 to 10 is flower preparation. 10 to noon is flower distribution. And if you'd like to participate in some way, you, you can sign up. Uh, you can see how to do that on the back of the bulletin. National Day of Prayer is here. It's this Thursday, May the 5th, and you're invited to, to be a part of a, a special prayer meeting right outside, out here in the courtyard. We're going to gather at uh, 630 and would encourage you to come and pray with other believers for our community and our nation and our world. Let's pray together. If you're married, we want to support you in your marriage journey. And we've been looking uh, for a program that, that will really help uh, couples build their marriages, and we found one. It's called uh, Grace Marriage. It's a program to enrich, protect, and grow our marriages. Uh, it includes uh, quarterly fellowship meetings with other couples and then ongoing enrichment activities that you can do with your spouse in between those four meetings. So if you're ready to make that super important investment in your marriage, you can register by using the, the barcode on, on the back of your bulletin. Just uh, scan that, take a picture of that, and that will take you uh, to the registration. If you have a, a prayer request this morning, you came here and you have a, a prayer need, a prayer burden, maybe it's for yourself or a friend or family member, take one of those communication cards, fill it out. On the back side, just jot down that prayer request, and put it in one of the boxes. You know those boxes at each of the doors. Just drop it in one of those boxes. Those requests are prayed over, all of them prayed over uh, during, during the week. We want to thank you for your financial support. And if you uh, have an offering to give, you can use those same 
uh, boxes. You can also give online. Go to our church website, bottom right-hand corner, blue icon. Click on that. Or if you're uh, watching this morning or prefer to give by mail, you can uh, mail your donation to QLBC, P.O. Box 7955, Stockton, California, 95267. 95267. And those are all the announcements that I'm going to uh, highlight this morning. Many more in your bulletin. Please read that over carefully and be in prayer for the ministries going on uh, throughout the week. And we're going to uh, uh, go back to, to, to worship and uh, glorifying our Lord as the, the praise team uh, comes to lead us. Amen. Yes, we will. Okay, let's go ahead and get out our hymn books, and we're going to turn to page 189. It's right in front of you, or if you're in the front of your pew, it's underneath your seat. And let's open up our hymnals to page 189, and we're going to sing Calvary Covers It All to prepare our hearts for communion this morning. And you know, I don't know about you, I believe that every believer is supposed to live in the victory that Christ um, overcame on the grave and on the cross and so he rose from the grave and he conquered the cross and I'm not over Resurrection Sunday I don't know if you are but I just love how we get to sing Calvary covers it all and um, Colossians 2:13, as your hymn Noel says he forgave us all our sins and I'm just so grateful so we're gonna sing out this hymn together We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Let's declare it. Far dearer than all than the world can impart was the message that came to my heart. How that Jesus alone for my sin did atone and Calvary covers it. matchless how matchless the grace when i look on the face of this jesus my crucified lord my redemption complete i then found at his feet and calvary covers it all we sing that chorus again for that. Thank you, Jesus. Let's head into communion time. Well, this morning we have the privilege of gathering together 
around the Lord's table, and I'm going to invite elders and commission leaders to come at this time and prepare to serve. Jesus made seven statements from the cross, and the one that kept coming back to me was his statement, it is finished. It is finished. And in the New Testament, the, the Greek translation of that wor word is tetelestai. It's a Greek commercial term, which means the debt has been paid in full. So the debt of our sin it's as if Jesus stamped on that bill for our sin with his blood. He stamped, it is paid, paid in full. And there are a number of hymns that refer to those words of Jesus, it is finished, and the fact that he paid that debt uh, for us. The, the hymn, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Because Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. My sin had left this crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And a contemporary uh, version of that adds these phrases, oh, oh, praise the name, the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. And then the song, hallelujah, what a savior, guilty, vile, and helpless we, spotless lamb of God was he, full atonement can it be, hallelujah. What a Savior. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Max Lucado writes about those words, it is finished. And he asked the question, what was finished? The history-long plan of redeeming man was finished. The message of God to man was finished. The works done by Jesus as a man on earth were finished. The task of selecting and training ambassadors was finished. The job was finished. The song had been sung. The blood had been poured. The sacrifice had been made. The sting of death had been removed. It was over. A cry of defeat? Hardly. Had his hands not been fastened down, I dare say that a triumphant fist would have punched the dark sky. No, this is no.
that mission, that you set your face toward, Jerusalem, toward the cross and you finish that work that you set out to do, to die on the cross for us, for our sins, to redeem us, to ransom us, to give us forgiveness of sins, brand new life. And we thank you as we partake of the bread and the cup for what you did and and for the forgiveness that we have of sin, past, present, and future. Thank you for that grace. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please remember to take the two cups stacked together. The Apostle Paul wrote that after supper, Jesus took the bread and gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant 
in my blood, sealed with my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father God, we just once again thank you. Thank you for your grace, undeserved, unmerited. We thank you for your saving grace as we put our trust in Jesus Christ, as we turn from our sins and embrace him. But we thank you for daily grace, for the special grace that you give us each and every day. And may we be reminded as we partake today that there's no way, no how we can earn your love, your favor. And may we not return to that track of trying to to do that. It's only by your grace. And Lord, we we want to to grow more and more into the likeness of of Jesus. We know that's going to happen as we surrender to you. And it's going to be by your grace and your grace alone. We thank you for the blood that was shed. As the song says, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and calms my fears. And it dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, I'm going to have you get your hymnal out one last time as we prepare our hearts for the sermon that Pastor Grant is going to give us this morning. And as you're opening up to page 521, or hymn 521, I should say, again, you're going to look for the song titled Redeemed. Redeemed is hymn 521. Let me read you a scripture. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 2 says this. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. All right, so again, hymn 521. Let's all stand as we sing out redeemed. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 together. Some of y'all know this by heart, so let's declare it out loud. Redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Verse 4, I know I shall see in his beauty the King in his steps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Amen. We're thankful to be his children. You may go ahead and close your hymnal. Let's praise God. Go ahead and be seated. Good morning. Is it still jumping? Does it help if I go like this? <laughs> that was blowing my mind there. So good morning. This morning, I want to share a message with you on how our God is a God of new things. How our God is a God of new things and how he might be up to something new right here at Quail Lakes. So my passage this morning is going to be Isaiah 43. I'm going to start at verse 19, but I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit. So while you find that uh, passage in your Bible, I'd like to tell you a story. 
And this, since we just celebrated Easter, I thought this would be a cute story to tell. It involves a six-year-old g- girl and an Easter ham. More importantly, this girl's obsession on how this Easter ham was cooked. So this little girl is in the kitchen, and she's watching her mom prepare the Easter ham. This is the first time she's ever watched it. So she's watching her fully intent and, and fascinated by the process. And the first thing the mom does before she puts the ham in the pan, she whacks off a big chunk of the ham. The little girl's watching her. She's like, Mommy, why did you whack off that big chunk of ham? And, and the mother says, Well, that's the way my mommy taught me. And I think maybe it's so that we can slice it up for sandwiches later. But... My mom, your grandmother's in the other room. If you really want to know, you can go and ask her. So the little girl skips into the other room, sits down next to her grandmother, says, Grandma, I was watching uh, Mommy cook the Easter ham, and the first thing she did is whacked off a big chunk of it. She said that you taught her that way, and if I wanted to know why, I should come and ask you. So, Grandma, why did you chunk off that big chunk of ham before putting it into the pan? And the grandma looks at her and says, Well, honey... I think it's maybe so that all those juices can seep into the ham and just give that ham, you know, tremendous flavor, just bring flavor to the entire ham. But that's the way my mom taught me. And if you really want to know, your great-grandma is on the back porch. If you want to know, you can go and ask her. So she runs out to the back porch, and she says, uh, she runs out to the back porch, and she's like, great-grandma. She explains her her trek, her journey, you know, her, her obsession of solving the mystery of the whacked up ham. She says, Grandma, I, or gee, Grandma, I went up to Mommy. She said that Grandma taught her, and then I asked Grandma. Grandma said, you taught her. M- mommy says that it's maybe to slice up uh, sa- for sandwiches later. Grandma said maybe it's for, you know, for the juices to seep into the entire ham. Gee, Grandma, please, 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 for the love of Pete, why did you whack off that big chunk of ham before putting it into the pan? Gee, Grandma looks down and she says, well, honey, that's because my pan was too small. The little girl said, I'm going to buy a bigger pan. (laughs) Now, that's what I call new thing thinking. But if we're honest, aren't we all guilty of doing things the way we do them just because that's the way we've always done them? We get into these ruts and get satisfied with the status quo. You know the idioms, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Leave well enough alone. Who changes a championship team? But as we read in Isaiah, God is a God of new things, and this challenges our status quo. So let's begin our reading, but before I do, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, you know, expectant today, God. We know you're a God of new things, and and, and so we come before you with an attitude of expectancy. God, open our ears to hear these new things. Open our eyes to see these new things. God, open our hearts to respond to these new things, and show us in your word how our response will bless you. And we pray all of it in your son's name. Amen. So again, Isaiah 43, 19 reads, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So if God is a God of new things, we just need to perceive it. That's what it says, right? Do you not perceive it? That seems simple enough, right? But often we don't recognize it which means we don't perceive it. The biggest new thing God did was the new covenant in Christ Jesus, and history tells us a lot of people did not perceive that, right? He sent Jesus as a sacrifice for our sin, but most at the time did not perceive nor receive this new thing. Again, history tells us this. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, and most of the Jewish population didn't perceive this new thing. They just whacked off the chunk of ham and stayed with the status quo. Okay, they didn't whack off ham because Jews don't eat ham. I get it. That was a joke. I get it. Don't email me. Don't email Pastor Mark. Don't email Pastor Randy. Email Brandon. Email Brandon. No, they just refused to be new thing thinkers. They were happy with the status quo, even though they are witnessing Jesus' miracles. They are hearing this new teaching that's lighting everybody up. But no, they're just going to stay with the status quo. They couldn't open their ears, they could not open their eyes, and they definitely could not open their hearts to this new covenant that God had brought. You know, there is a profitable area 
in the music industry. You're not going to believe this, but it's called the nostalgia craze. Several specialized stations have been created that are completely devoted to playing what they call the songs of your life. The songs of your life. More often and in different places, you'll hear the rhythms, the melodies, the music, and the songs of yesterday. Songs that bring us back to, to the good old times. You know, the, the, the good memories that we have. Songs that are referred to as the golden oldies. Just this past week, last week, my wife and I were on a date day at Panera. And I had been expressing how I, was, how I was researching this, that there are radio stations that do this. Radio stations that are designed to keep us satisfied with the status quo, right? And uh, she heard one at Panera. She goes, honey, this is one of those songs. So hopefully you'll hear one and realize that maybe you're, we're just sitting in the status quo. See, these stations, they capitalize on this appetite for nostalgia and wrap precious memories up in melodies and phrases of our favorite songs that bring us back to yesteryear, back to a better time. You probably heard them in offices, in, in elevators, at Walmart. I've heard them at Target, big box stores, and even Panera. Songs and melodies can keep us satisfied with the status quo, but this modern craze for nostalgia is confronted and challenged by Scripture. So if you jump up one verse above verse 19 to verse 18, uh, Isaiah writes, Rem Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. That's Isaiah 43, 18. So what are these former things, these things of old? What is the prophet saying to forget? Well, if you go to verses 16 and 17, they tell us, it says, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. That's Isaiah 43, 16 and 17. So is that what God is asking the Israelites to forget? The text can't be telling them to forget the Exodus, right? That's a big deal, the Exodus. Maybe the prophet is warning them not to become prisoners of their negative past. You know, are, are you guys remembering all of the big mistakes you made during the Exodus? You know, may, maybe the prophet is saying, forget about the golden calf and all that wilderness complaining and fighting. Or forget about the many times you cried out to go back to Egypt. You, you, well, if we only died in Egypt, right? Or that you were afraid and refused to take the land that I promised you and wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb because they stood by my promise. Forget about it! If this is what the Scripture is suggesting, then there is no question in my mind that it has a strong appeal for most of us, right? Suggesting that we forget the stupid things we have said, the disappointment, the embarrassments of the what-was-I-thinking regrets of our past. To forget all of that would be attractive to anyone who still live in homes haunted by the ghosts of painful memories and painful mistakes. And if we're all honest, we all have them. If the text is suggesting that we should not be prisoners of our negative past, then in many ways, this interpretation would be welcomed and embraced by many. But this is not the emphasis of this text. If you go to verses 14 and 16 in the same chapter, you'll read, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives, even the Chaldeans in the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your king. The prophet is foretelling of the Israelites' return from exile in Babylon, preparing them for what many theologians call the, the second exodus or, or the new exodus. Now, I'm not bringing up the theological parallel between the first and second exodus or the first and the new exodus because it geeks out my friend Art Delgado. No, I bring it up because I believe that the general principle we can take from this verse uh, today is the same general principle that the Israelites took from it when it was written. So let me explain. Verses 16 and 17 refers to the Exodus, right? You know, quenched like a wick. Then God is, then is God telling the Israelites to forget the marvelous triumphs that he provided to his people during the Exodus? That, that hardly seems right. To forget the signs and wonders, the daily manna, the water from the rock, is he asking him to forget all of that? I do not think so. Perhaps the emphasis in the passage is not that Israel should refuse to be prisoners of a negative past but that Israel must not become prisoners of a positive past. You see, God performed all of these great miracles for Israel. 
But the prophet tells them to remember not the former things, not to consider things of old. Why? Maybe Israel is li living on past blessings. They only look back on what God had done and ceased to look forward to what God could and would do, and they miss Jesus. They miss Jesus. The Israelites' faith was limited by memory and locked in by memory. It wasn't for a forward-looking faith, and it still, it still does not rec recognize God's new work in Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the opposite of perceiving. If we want to perceive God's new thing, we need to let go of the status quo and have faith that God will conceive the new thing his word promises. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? But by nature, we gravitate to what's familiar to us, what's easy, what we're accustomed to, the status quo, just like the Israelites. Friends, these last two years have been extremely challenging. Would you not agree? Extremely challenging. They might, be the most they might have been the most challenge challenging years that any of us alive today have actually experienced. I don't think any generation alive today has seen what we have seen in the last two years. In the last two years, we've experienced lockdowns and isolations. We have experienced anger and frustration. We've experienced racial injustice and political unrest. We have experienced protests, riots, violence, and division. We have fought over wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. We have fought over getting a vaccine or not getting a vaccine. Should we meet indoors and trust God or be cautious not to jeopardize those who might be at risk? These last two years have been more challenging than anything I've experienced in my 60 years. There is no correct answer to many. I bring this up because maybe there's a similarity. Maybe God is preparing us to bring us back. Maybe we've been in exile for the last two years to this COVID. If Easter Sunday was any indication, then I'm excited. We had a full house and God was glorified. I'm excited because of the new things that I've seen God do right here at this church during exile. Let me explain a few of them. Rooted Bible study, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Sermon-based Bible study, behold, I'm doing a new thing. The deaf ministry that sits right over here, they are no longer under outreach. They are a standalone ministry, which they should be. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Uh, Filipino culture event, behold, I am doing a new thing. Alternative service in the evening, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Hot dogs and holy weeks. I don't even know what that is, but that is a new thing, I guarantee you. <laughs> middle school ministries. We just hired a new middle school ministry director with a focus and an emphasis on that, that age group. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Our personnel commission, are you ready for this? Our personnel commission during COVID hired 10 employees. Behold, I am doing a new thing. <laughs> Global focus and outreach partnered with Shou Showered with Love, which is a ministry partner of ours, for the very first time on Thursday of last week. You can go into the, uh, into the foyer there and look at the Global Focus Monitor and see pictures of all that that took place. That's going to be an ongoing thing every Thursday. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. This is how God has been working here at Quell during this, this pandemic. Now it springs up. Now it springs forth. He's already doing this, you guys. Do you not perceive it? For us to receive, we must first perceive, right? For us to perceive it, we must be new thing thinkers. We need to let God disrupt our rhythms, our status quo, so our attention is drawn to what new thing God is doing, what new thing he might have for us. So, well, pastor, I'm so busy with my job and taking care of my family that I don't have time to, uh, time to become a new thing thinker. Well, that's okay, son, because we've done some new thing thinking for you. Okay, uh, next week, Chad... Erlenborn, from a senior church advisor from World Vision, will be our guest preacher, and he's going to extend an invitation to the Matthew 25 challenge. The Matthew 25 challenge is a week-long text message challenge uh, for churches. For seven days, families, individuals, and congregations will step out of their comfort zones through sacrificial daily, uh, daily challenges, bringing Jesus' uh, call in Matthew 25 to life. 
During the week, uh, you'll re receive text messages with a daily challenge. Like the first one would be, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you, you gave me something to drink. When I was alone or a stranger or homeless, you invited me in. So the first challenge will be, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. They're going to ask you to skip your lunch, fast your lunch, and then e in the evening time, um, eat ri only rice and beans for dinner. Now, is that you really becoming the, the least of these? No. But it, it's, it's you making a conscious effort trying to step closer to them. On the next day, Tuesday, they're going to give you another text message. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. They're going to say, drink nothing but water today. No coffee, no energy. You five cup of coffee, guys? At the end of that day, you're going to feel that. You, 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 you Red Bull riders, at the end of the day, you're going to feel that. Drink only water. So that's coming, and that starts next week. Then the week after that, um, the following week, it's Peter Mutabazi, also with World Vision and a former Ugandan street kid, will come and share his story and offer a sponsorship opportunities that are community-based and are so original that it's new thing thinking. So Matthew 25, new thing thinking. Chosen is what it's called, new thing thinking. These, th these things are, all you have to do is just say yes. They're, you, God doesn't expect you to be a pastor, a lay leader, an elder, or anything like that to say yes to what he has for you. The, grace marriage starts on uh, uh, May 14th. We talked about it here from the pulpit, right? It's, um, it's, today is the last day to register. My wife will be manning the booth in the foyer. That's new thing thinking. Think about that. We're going to start, um, we're gonna start a, a Bread of Life food giveaway. This is going to be on the third Friday of every month. Third Friday, right? Yeah, third Friday of every month. We're going to do it on the first Friday, but people still have groceries on the first Friday. So wait till the third Friday when they start to run out of groceries. And, we're gonna do, and it's open and available to our community as well as to our church. So if there's people in the church that need to get food because, you know, economic times are really tough right now, we're going to start doing that as well. That is new thing thinking. We're going to need volunteers right next to my wife, because I wasn't sure if Lily's going to show up yet, but right next to her is a, a, a sign-up sheet for that. That's during the day, though, on Fridays. That's new thing thinking. Maybe there are other new things that God is leading to you. Don't reserve your yes because you think you aren't qualified. You know, um, don't reserve your yes because you don't feel righteous enough. You know, Pastor Randy preached one time um, a, a message, and I think the, the, the gist of his message was get in the game. And I think that's all God is asking us to do, is just get into the game. You know, and, and once you're in, he'll, he'll divide everything. He'll make a way for you. He, scripture says that I'll make a way through the wilderness. He doesn't expect you to make a way through the wilderness. He says, I will bring rivers uh, to the desert. So he'll supply what, what we need. But what we need is we need a community, of, a church community, to be active in our church as well as active in our community to really show this city of Stockton who Quail Lakes Baptist Church is. You guys, we, we have opportunities available to us right now that we have never had before. And I'm excited to just, just be involved with all of them. So anyways... I read a quote recently by Eugene Peterson, and he's the author of the Message Translation Bible. And it read, the strongest sign of authenticity in all we do is the inadequacy we feel most of the time we are doing it. You know, when I'm doing what I'm doing, I never feel qualified for it. The strongest sign of authenticity in all we do is the inadequacy we feel most of the time while we're doing it. God wants our love for him to be expressed to others. And after these last two years, I believe that that's new thing thinking. So are you going to look at these new things that I just listed? Three, four of them in the next three weeks. Are you going to look at those as um, opportunities? Are you going to look at them as opportunities to become a new thing thinker? Or are you just going to whack off the chunk of ham and stick with the status quo? Father, I am so thankful that you are faithful to us, that you continue to bring forth that which is new, and that you bless us with these things. God, give us the ability to perceive where you are at work and the heart to, and passion to join you there. In these coming weeks, show us where you desire us to plug in and where you desire us to say yes to what you have for us. God, we love you, we praise you, and we desire to just glorify you and lift your name on high. God, help us do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
No, no, that's not going to happen. I, 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 could, I could see, what could I do? What could I do? I, I, is, is it still, okay, no, that's not going to even work anymore. It's, William's going to sing a hymn. Yes, you are. Here. I'm going to sing a hymn? Yep. Here we go. Thank you, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I just now looked at it. Dang it, it's still on. How about page number four, How Great Thou Art? And of course, this is going to be a cappella. <laughs> oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Thank you, William. Thank you, William. So, am I on? Okay, so please don't leave with any prayer burn. Sorry about that weird finish there, because normally we have a song, and it, it just went right to benediction, so I apologize for that. Please forgive me. Don't tell Mark, okay? He's out of town. I don't think he watches these, so don't tell him. But anyways, let me offer up a little bit of prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you for, uh, God, thank you for the love I feel in this room. Thank you for the passion I feel in this room, God. I pray that today, today, that you would release this passion into our community, God, that you would release it with the power of your spirit uh, leading the way, God, and that uh, we would make a difference for you, God. Uh, again, thank you. We love you. We praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Uh, the prayer counselors will be up here if you have any prayer needs. Gosh.